What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving back into a game that I have not done a video on in many, many moons. Many years, man. Caves of Cud. Probably one of the most expansive, difficult, open world roguelikes that there is. However, I do think that it's one of the better roguelikes that there is. If you wanted to hear my favorite roguelikes, usually Tales of Majayal, Caves of Cud, and Rogue's Tale. Those are the three that I've dumped just absurd amounts of hours into. And the fun thing about roguelikes is they're usually free. Like, you can get Caves of Cut, I'm pretty sure, from Brian Bucklew's website. But I don't know. When I played it last time, it was definitely free. But now it's been on Steam for a while. So it's possible that it's not free anymore. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to dive on into a new game. If after watching this, you wanted to get Caves of Cud for yourself, I'll have a link for you down below in the description. I'll try to dig up the one from the website and also the one from Steam. And then you'll also find a link to my Discord where you can join my community and come say what's up to me and ask me any questions you might have after I upload videos. Let's go ahead and start a new game. Uh, so I'm going to play on roleplay mode this time around just because I'm recording a video. And when recording a video, things go wrong. Sometimes things crash. Sometimes video recordings don't work. So playing on roguelike mode is going to make this take much, much more effort and time than I would like it to take. Normally, I play on classic mode, but for the sake of the video, we'll go with roleplay. This allows you to save your game every time you go to a town. Uh, I actually kind of like that they included this just for accessibility. Not everybody wants to lose 30 hours worth of work just because they, you know, mistyped or something like that on their numpad. So that's pretty good. Uh, we'll make a new character. And the first decision that you have to make in Caves of Cud is going to come down to whether or not you want to be a mutant or whether you want to be the kin. Uh, mutants are basically the general population of Cud. Cud is a place that's in the post, 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 post apocalypse. 10 to 30,000 years in the future where pretty much everything has fallen apart and people don't even know what stuff like folding chairs are. And most people are crazy mutated. Now, I'm not talking about X-Men style mutated where you still look like a normal human being, but you have like powers. You know what I mean? I'm talking about, like, really mutated. Like, you have, like, a third leg and, like, a fourth eye and, like, one of your ears is made out of cherry blossoms and then your other ear is made out of, like, digitized essence. This is a weird game. That's, like, the hallmark thing of Cud is that it is very, very strange. Uh, mutated humans, they have powers. As you level up, you get more powers. Everything from eye lasers to having a turtle shell to having extra arms like Goro. You can do all of that. You can be very customizable. The the downside is in the beginning of the game they tend to be kind of weak they tend to not be very strong and they tend to get killed very easily in the early game uh, the kin the kin are the last per pure humans on earth and so their genome is stable what that means is that they are better than everybody else within the context of the caste system uh, they are the nobility they are the paladins they are the priest class they are the warrior class and the noble class uh, the upside to them not getting powers is that they get a lot more stat points which makes them much stronger in the early game but they don't get powers to help them out in the late game and powers tend to mature very aggressively on mutated humans so anyways how did the true kin make up for that well because their genome is stable they can have cyberware just like Shadowrun. they can replace their arm with a giant guts cannon they can replace their eyes with like scanners and things like that. They can replace their skin with translucent material so that they're hard to see and they dodge much more easily, so on and so forth. Uh, for new players, I usually recommend you go with the kin because they're a little bit more sturdy than the mutants. It's very, very easy to make a bad build with the mutants, whereas it's not easy to make a bad build with the kin in the early game. Later on, that paradigm kind of shifts and the mutants get a lot stronger, but we're not going to be seeing that here today because this is just an introduction to Cud. So we're going to go ahead and do the true kin. There are a number of casts that you can join here when you are a true kin. You can pick and choose whichever one you like the best. There are some of them that are good at charisma. There are some that are good at fighting. There are some that are good at survival. There's loads of skills in this game, and there's a cast that sort of exemplifies every skill in the game. The ones that I would recommend for new players is either the Praetorian or the Child of the Hearth. The Praetorian is an all-around warrior. Uh, so he, he's got it all. He's got swords, he's got shields, he's got plate mail, he's got rifles and bows. He's got all the fun stuff that you need in order to make a warrior character. The Child of the Hearth is similar, but the Child of the Hearth is all about heavy weapons and two-handers and clubs. And so if you wanted to use big two-handed warhammers, if you wanted to use, you know, 
picks, and if you wanted to use flails and things of that nature, the Child of the Hearth is the one you want to go for. In general, I find that the Child of the Hearth is the absolute easiest way to go. The Praetorian has a little bit of a learning curve, because you got to learn when to shoot at people, and when to take them out, and when to fight them in hand-to-hand. -hand. But once you've got that down, you're probably good to go as well. I'm going to go with the Praetorian, because I like having guns, okay? I like shooty-shooty-bang-bang. Bang. Uh, here's your stats. Your strength dictates your armor penetration with your abilities and how much damage you do. Your agility dictates how good you are at accuracy. Your toughness dictates your resistances and how much HP you get. Intelligence is going to allow you to identify things. And then it also allows you to get more skill points each time you level up. Willpower is for casting and mutante type things and resisting. Ego is basically charisma and your ability to force your will on other people. I'm going to take, since we're a fighty man's character, I'm going to give us a plus two to damage and a plus two to hit. I'm going to give us a plus one to HP. I'm going to even out our intellect. I'm going to even out our will. Ego, I don't really care about. I don't think that ego is altogether that big of a deal for the video we're doing here today. It will be a big deal when you get later on into the game, but for right now, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll go ahead and we will put strength up to 22. We'll put agility up to 21. And then I'm just going to give like a little smooch point up into intelligence so we can take that up to 18 when we get a free attribute point. I think our character looks good. We get to pick a cyberware now that we start out with. There's everything you can think of here from dermal plating that gives you insulation from elements. There's bio scanners that allow you to see enemy stats and identify objects. There's night vision. There's ankle tendons that make you move faster. There's the dodge skin I was talking about. There's a rapid release finger flexor that allows you to fire bullets faster than other characters. There's the cherubic visage, which allows you to look like an angel, which makes people just like you better. Uh, I'm going to go with the hyperelastic ankle tendons because sometimes when you're a new character in Cud, you need to run away, and there is no way around that. If you do not run, you are going to die. And so being able to run faster than everything else around you is actually kind of a marketable skill in a place as dangerous as Cud. And so I'm going to go with the move speed. Uh, I'm going to name my character real fast. I'm going to name him Prork. That's his name. Prork. That's, I feel like that's as good enough a name. Perfect. Good old Prork. Next. Uh, you get to pick where you want to start out in this game. You can start out in Joppa. You can start out in a randomly generated village of your choice, in a biome of your choice. Joppa is the designed start. It is the structured start. It is the one that is balanced and designed for characters to survive over the long term. Whereas these ones right here are for the more procedural survival -y experience that you might be looking for with a much shorter shelf life on your survival. But they do provide interesting scenarios. We'll go with Joppa for right now because my guess is a lot of new players are going to see this and they're going to want some kind of introduction to the game. And Joppa is the introduction that most people get. On the 30th of Uru Ux, you arrive at the Oasis Hamlet of Joppa along the far rim of Mograyi, the Great Salt Desert. All around you, moisture farmers tend to their groves of Viridian water vine. There are huts wrought from rock salt and brine stock. On the horizon, Cud's jungles strangle the chrome steeples and rusted archways to the earth. Further and beyond, the fabled spindle rises above the fray and pierces the cloud-ribbon sky. So here we are in Joppa. Uh, the first thing you should always do in Joppa is rob these chests that are in these house. I'm doing mouse control today. You can control with the numpad, and normally I do. But I wanted to show off the fact that they've mostly made the game mouse compatible. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and loot this. Ah, it's just a two-handed sword in there. I don't care about that. What else do we got? Let's see what these other villagers have in their homes. What you got in your pockets there? A Borderlands revolver. Yeah, that's a goodie right there. I'll take the water skin too. Water is your money in this game, so a water skin is not only your drinking utility in this game, it's also your wallet. Uh, so because this game is post-apocalyptic, there was a series of plagues, kind of Moses style, and the first plague was the insultaning. And what the insultaning did is it turned all the water sources into salt water. Uh, which meant that water became very, very precious if it was palatable or potable. And so anyways, that's why water is the money. Uh, inside the UI, we've got our character and his name up here. We've got our HP on this side. We've got our nutritional status, whether we're fed and watered. We've got how much weight we're carrying versus how much we can have. We have our money. And then from here, we just have our movement speed, our quickness, our armor value, our dodge value. And then MA is... 
I don't remember what MA is. And then we have a sundial on this side. Just in case you're wondering what the UI implies, all these little windows right here that are telling you things that are happening, you can click them and drag them just like an MMO or whatever to move them wherever you want them. I love that customizable UI. I think that's a really, really good idea. This guy's a vendor. He'll buy and sell stuff. This guy over here is going to give us our first quest. And so that's who we're going to talk to. Live and drink, friend. May you find shade here in Joppa. I need work. Well, some critters have been eating the water vine. Farouk says he saw one slinking around a vine patch. Ugly thing, he said. Pale, white, eight legs, ear splitting wine. I noticed a bit of red dirt in the water vine pool, the same that we find in the soil at a nearby cave to the north that we call Red Rock. Travel to Red Rock and kill as many of these critters as you possibly can. Bring back the corpse of one, too. Elder Iridad will reward your efforts. Okay. So what do you want to do if you want to go to the overmap? Well, you just press the minus key on your numpad and off we go to the world map. And there it is, this beautiful, vibrant, colorful world map. I love it. I think it looks great. As far as games that have like very, very simple graphics and aesthetics, I think that the color palette that they chose, just perfect. Uh, Red Rock is right here. We are this little guy right here. And when we're zoomed out, we can just move normally to where we want to go. And so off we go to Red Rock. Just be aware that your hunger, it drains, and your thirst, it drains a lot faster while you're walking the open roads here. What some people like to do at this phase is you can just walk off the edge of the map if you want to. Oh, it's nighttime. I got to put a torch on. Hold on. Let me get a torch over here so that I can see out my eyeballs. Oh, my character's right-handed. Cool. I usually get left-handed characters. It's kind of random at character. Uh-oh. There's mutated baboons here, and they want to hurt me. Don't like that very much. All right, well, let's click and kill some baboons real fast. You can see them throwing rocks at me. We need to find a stairwell that goes down into Red Rock here, and hopefully we find it soon. But you can actually just go off the edge of the map right here if you want to, and it'll take you to a new randomly generated cell. What some people like to do is they like to farm fish, and they like to farm glow pads or whatever until they're, like, level 2 or 3. You can also turn in artifacts to the scientist in Joppa to get a free level if you have two artifacts. But, you know, it's up to you whether or not you want to do that. I figured we'd just jump straight on into the adventure and fight some mutated baboons. My health is below 60%. Oh, no. Not below 60%. Die, baboon! All right, so we've killed off some baboons. The color of your character implies a lot of things. Right now, it means that we're missing health, but we've turned back white again, which means that our health is restored. And we fit level two from slaughtering apes that we found out in the mutated, irradiated wasteland. Hopefully there's not like any legendary baboons out here. Sometimes there's like, so this game has kind of a Diablo thing going on where there's like named enemies that'll show up and they can be a big, big problem. They can be a huge problem. They can bat way outside their league and totally wreck people that like, probably on paper they shouldn't be able to wreck just with their special abilities. So watch yourself. There's our stairwell. We can go down into the dungeon that is a centipede. That's a pretty rough enemy to run into first. It looks like he's fighting someone. I don't know if we'll survive this. Oh, we one-shotted him. Nice. It's because he was getting attacked in the booty hole by that slime. That slime was fighting him just like we were fighting him. All right, so we killed them both. I'm going to hang out here for a second until I heal. Oh, there's something. Oh, there's a horned chameleon at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, don't like that. Uh, I'm fighting him down the stairs right now by plus pressing the plus key. We haven't hit him yet. Hey, we killed him, and we got a bunch of XP, so we're already level three. Huzzah. Uh, this sounds like it's going to be a tough dungeon. They've thrown a couple of nasty things at us already. New characters are going to struggle with horned chameleons and with the centipedes. And so, oop, there goes a kobold right there. We done killed it. They're called snap jaws, but they're basically like hyena-headed kobolds. Uh, iron battle axe? Definitely take that. Yeah, get that iron battle axe. I tend to pick up everything that's made of iron or better while I'm in the dungeon because I have the carrying capacity anyways. So when I get back to town, I can sell it to make some money and also trade into things that I might want. Mm, let's take a look around. Our character's equipment, in case you were wondering. We got a torch in one hand. We got our rifle right there, but we don't really have any ammo for it. I should have bought some ammo before we left Joppa because the rifle can really save you. That was kind of a scrub move. We've got chain mail over here, which gives us three armor. We've got boots, which gives us one armor, and we've got a steel longsword at the moment. I don't know if it's like a special steel longsword, though. It's not, but it is covered in slime because we killed a slime with it. Your weapons will inherit the attributes of the stuff you kill with it. So, like, let's say that you kill a slime with your sword. It'll get covered in slime. 
It's just a thing that happens. Or if you kill an enemy that explodes into like a geyser of anime style blood, you'll have a bloody sword for a little while until you clean it. Ooh, leather cap, nice. That'll give us another defense. Now you have five defense. Sweet, dude. All right, let's continue looking around. What's over here? There's a long sword right there and a woven tunic. If you're wondering where I'm seeing that, it's on this little preview right here. Every time we step over the top of like a dead enemy, it's gonna tell us what's underneath us right now. You can also turn on an option that tells you everything that's laying on the ground near you. I do have that turned on on my personal computer, not my work computer, but uh, don't have it turned on here and I don't wanna dig forward in the options. Oh no, it's a legendary nobold or snapjaw. That's really bad. Don't like that. We might die. Do I have anything I can use to supplement? I can shoot him. We got blaze injectors, a Hulk honey injector. What does that do? Slender metal tube. It'll raise your strength and give you temporary hit points. I was more looking for something that might heal me. Let's see here. Yeah, salve injector. Exactly. There we go. So I've used my salve injector on myself. I'm going to regenerate for a little bit. Is he still coming? I can't see because it's dark in here and I've only got a torch. Sounds like something might have got him. Oh no, there he is right there. Okay, I've got my gun. I'm going to shoot him. He got hit for 15 damage. And then we killed him. The Snapjaw Warlord. He's down and he had an iron sword. Nice. I'll take that. What am I getting hit by? Oh, a seed spitter. It's a bronze mace and a witchwood wreath. None of that's useful to me. I'm going to kill that seed spitter, though. And also that little kobold right there. We got a beaded bracelet. That's a trade good that's worth a bunch of money. If I remember correctly, the beaded bracelet does like... It's worth like 50 bucks. Watch out for those jilted lovers right there. Sometimes they're kudzu vines. And the kudzu, they have the same graphic. And, like, I guess they have a similar graphic. I don't know if they're actually, like, pixel perfect the same. But anyways, what kudzu vines do is they cause your gear to rust, which is just, like, the worst, because rusting makes your gear, like, fall off your body and become useless until you fix it. And, like, I don't have any of the materials to fix it right now, unfortunately. We are hungry right now, so I'm going to whip up a meal right here at this fire. Rummaging through your surroundings, you find ingredients. A boar tooth, some dog thorn, a dram of exalted rust, and a salt hopper wing. You throw it all in the pot and stir and eat the meal. And now we're sated. You can do that at any campfire that you want. In case you were wondering how that functions. That's a new feature that they added to the game. That was not a thing the last time I played the game. And honestly, keeping yourself fed was really, really difficult. Sorry, little spider. I didn't want to murder you, but you were just kind of victim of opportunity. You were there. Wrong place, wrong time, spider. Uh, let's take a look over to the right and see if there's anything down this little nook over here. Got that guy. There's a bear. Yeah, you love to see it. Probably would have preferred to have shot him, but I guess we know now that I can fight a bear with my bare hands and also a weapon. <laughs> I fought him with only my bare hands and a weapon. Uh, let's go ahead and... This guy's a snapjaw warrior, so he's a little bit tougher, but I think we can take him. We've hit him a couple times. There, we. Ooh, that 17 damage hit was kind of disgusting. I almost feel bad for him. I'm going to take that wooden buckler because we don't have our shield on right now because we need to dedicate our hand to holding a torch. Our steel shield is really good, but a buckler can be strapped onto your arm. And so... I'm leveling up. What does that do? Well, every couple level ups, you're going to get an extra attribute point. I'm going to top up my intelligence maybe to plus one. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'm getting more skill points now. And then there's also a skill list over here. I have 200 skill points. And what I'm going to take from this massive list of skills is I'm going to take deft blocking. It raises my chance to block from 50% up to 75%. And so I always find that deft blocking pays back dividends in the early game for keeping characters alive long enough to matter. Uh, some people may not like that pick, but I like that pick. Now remember, our goal here was that we were supposed to be finding a little bug that's eating the water vine. who's probably around here somewhere. A couple more kobolds getting took out. 
Um, we've got an iron dagger right there. I'm going to leave it. The iron daggers aren't worth very much. I'm going to clear these dread roots. If you're wondering how I'm force attacking spaces, uh, you hold down control while pressing the numpad in the direction that you want to attack in. And you can force attack an area if, for example, you think there's an invisible enemy there. Or if you think, was that good water right there? Oh, it's brackish. Okay. Sometimes the water is fresh on the ground and you can pick it up. Not always. Hey, there's some right there. So we just got 10 bucks worth of water. Sweet. Oh, I accidentally attacked that bat. I didn't mean to. The bats are friendly to us for whatever reason. Bats don't mind us. And they'll help us in our fights. So will dogs. Uh, let's see. But dogs are loyal good boys. So that makes a lot of sense. He just had a hand axe. Okay. Oh, there's another Snapjaw guy over here. He's one of the warlords, huh? Yeah, he's like a double upgraded Snapjaw. Ten damage that I just hit him with, though. So that's good. Our armor seems to be good enough. Hey, we're getting a lot of block procs. Good. If you don't know what proc stands for, it stands for Programmed Random Occurrence. Basically, anything in a video game that has a percentage chance to happen, if it goes off, that's called a proc. Uh, he had 36 drams of water on him. Yeah, I'll take it. That's actually a pretty good haul right there. Kill that off. Jilted Lover, get out of the way. We're healing. We're feeling good. We're running around the dungeon. Hopefully finding something sexy to smash and get like... You know, some decent gear. Ooh, an engraved cloth robe. So this is a marked item. Marked items have colorful names, and the colorful ma names mean something good. They mean that that item does something more than a mundane version of that item would do. In the case of the engraved items, it means that you're supposed to look at the engraving because it will teach you about the world of Cud, and it will teach you about the history of Cud and the characters of Cud that existed in it before you came. So this one right here, this item is graved with a scene of life from the ancient Sultan Reshef. While traveling near Bethesda Susa, Reshef lost control of his chariot and drove it off a cliff. Luckily, a local physician named Rebecca came to his aid. Moved by her kindness, Reshef enrolled at a nearby hospice as her apprentice. If we're wearing this, we get plus 50 reputation with the cult of the coiled lamb. I don't know who that is, but there you go. It'll note that information inside my journal. And then sometimes it will actually give you a quest as well. Uh, so, for example, if it said that, like, the Sultan so-and-so went on an adventure and fought this at this place in this year, you can go to that place inside the context of Cud, and you can go investigate the site of that great and powerful battle. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look off to the left over here. Enemy down. We seem to be okay so far. What is that right there? Just a dead bat? Oh, I've been impaled. It makes sense now. Uh, we may die from bleeding. Nope, we got better. We're no longer bleeding. Lucky to be us. I'm going to hang out here for a second and just regenerate my health. But yeah, there was a buried ivory right there. There's a booby trap, basically. It's like a weird plant that hides under the ground and spikes you in the feet when you try to walk by. Uh, bleeding is actually kind of a serious problem in this game, and I forgot to buy bandages before we left, too, because I'm bad at my job. I just, you know, I'm bad at my job for the right reasons, though. Like, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I know. I can hear the eyebrow. I can hear your eyebrow raising. Just wait a second. I'm going to explain myself. I'm so excited to record these videos that I get ahead of myself, and I forget to do things. I don't forget to do them because I don't know about them. I forget what the hell is that. Lover's Blossom? The rare and beautiful blossom of a lover vine. I'm going to guess that that's valuable because in many, many hours of playing this game, I've never seen one of those. Uh, painted studded armor. Painted is the same as engraved. Painted on this item is a scene of the life of the ancient sulf sulf uh, Sultan Q. Yuppers. The second. Yup time, I guess. Sometime in 5093 BR, after having made enemies with a collective of jewelers, the Sultan of Cud disappeared. Because of Q. Yupper's reputation for murdering someone by swilling the moisture from their skin, she was chosen as the successor. That's a pretty, if you really think about it, that's a pretty gnarly way to execute somebody, dude. You just get up on their arm, and you give them, like, a sucking raspberry that goes so hard that it deprives them of all moisture, and then they're just like, and they, like, shrivel up into kind of like a skin bag with nothing left inside of it. That's pretty gnarly, bro. I would never mess with a sultan that could do that. 
I am going to take that because it has a modifier on it, which tends to make it a little bit more valuable when you sell it. Where was our stairwell at? There's another stairwell over here. There we go. Well, I'm going down the stairs. See if there's any monsters around here that are worth our time. Another kobold. Instantly one-shotted. A treasure chest. Anything good in it? A beaded bracelet. That's worth like 50 water. Yeah, I'll take that. A burnt capacitor is worth something too. I was a little bit worried that if I attacked that, something bad was going to happen. You know, mushrooms, spores, all that kind of stuff. These centipedes are bad news, but our block carried us right there. We took a lot less damage because of our 75% block chance. I'm glad we took that. There's an iron battle axe. I'll take it. We're sitting at 226 out of 330 right now, so I've still got a little bit of room left for loot. What is that? A horned chameleon? Okay. Uh, we're getting tooled up pretty good right now, and I'm not happy about it. I'm going to backpedal until I heal a little bit, and then we'll fight that centipede if we have to. Come on, give me my health back. There we go. All right. So I got my health back. We killed the centipede. I always try to kill centipedes because they give a fat grip of XP. They get like 125 or like 150 for it. There goes another one. Oh, it's a fart shroom. Did it poison me or something? Dude, we're blocking like every other attack right now. This is great. Hey, we killed another centipede too. All right, I'm going to hang out in this corner until I heal. We've leveled up, so we should probably take a look and see what we can do with that level up. We've got 200 SP. Well, we could get lunge, which does a special attack depending on what combat stance we're in. If you're wondering where the combat stance is, it's right here. You can change your combat stance around. There's aggressive, defensive, and dueling from what I remember. And so anyways, you can pick and choose between those. You can also mark targets. Uh, gun abilities, you have to mark the target first before you shoot it with a gun ability for the gun ability to actually work. We can also click Rebuke Robot because we're like a paladin against machines. And then we've got a shield slam and a sprint down there in this bottom tab that we can play around with. But anyways, I think what I would rather have is wayfaring skills. I hate getting lost in this game. There's like a dice roll every time you move a tile on the overworld map and you get lost from time to time and it is just the worst. I hate it. Uh, so I'm going to get Wayfaring so that I'm much less likely to get lost. And then I will probably take the extra hundred. And I'll put it into Tinkering, I think. Yeah, so I'm now much more successful at examining artifacts. And then if I can get some more skill points, I can start disassembling things. And slowly you can become a crafter who can take like a bunch of grenades and a blueprint and turn it into like cyberware that will make your life a lot easier and then install it on yourself. And I find that getting that early is typically better than getting it late. Uh, that way you can start to accumulate random refuse and things to help you out. Oh, there's a lot of shrooms around, man. This is kind of obnoxious. At least we got an interesting biome for the playthrough, though. That's nice. Oh, there's slime over here. I didn't know if the slime and the kobold were going to fight each other. It looks like the answer to that is no. Eh, he's got a blood-stained neck ring. That's a trade item. I'll take that. So really, this game, water is really heavy, and water is really unwieldy, despite it being the currency of the realm. So... What you want to do is you want to turn your water into, like, gems. And you want to turn your water into, like, ingots of iron and stuff like that. Snail encrusted leather armor. Yeah, I'll get that. Uh, that makes you friendlier. It's, it's armor that gives you a reputation boost with snails while you're wearing it. It's literally a, a leather suit of armor with a snail shell on the back of it. At least that's how I envision it in my head. Out of the way, mushrooms. You're blocking the way. Oh, another warlord. Oh, he cracked my helmet, you little bastard. You don't have to worry about a helmet being cracked. I don't think it's permanent. I think it's just for the sake of that combat. But I think if he cracks it again, after he cracks it the first time, it, like, breaks it or something. He might just be reducing my 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 armor value. I don't really know. I haven't super looked into what crack does since I came back after a couple-year hiatus. There's a counterweighted Chris over here. 
That's going to be a Chris Dagger that gives you a plus one to hit, which actually, if you're a Dagger character, you're probably going to have a lot of agility, but that plus one is no slouch. I bet that plus one turns out pretty well for you. So with a few minutes left here, what can we accomplish in this dungeon? Well, we got to find the little pink bug guy. But is there a transit? Nope, there's not a transfer down there. All right, so we got to go all the way back around this mushroom dungeon. I don't think I've ever seen Red Rock be a mushroom biome before, and I've been playing a lot lately. So this is actually a kind of a fun experience. Uh, we'll go ahead and go. Oh, there's a there's a centipede back there. He is now a dead centipede. Oh, cool! I found two luminous mushrooms. Those are probably good for Eaton's. Is that what it is? Are those Eaton's mushrooms? Let's go take. Ooh, we got so many blood-stained neck rings, man. We've got tons of beaded bracelets too. This playthrough is off to a really good start. This character is about to be rich if we can make it back to Joppa. He's about to be very, very wealthy for this part of the game. Uh, where was the food at? I actually don't know exactly where it put my mushrooms that it said that I picked up. It said I picked up luminous glow shrooms, but I don't see them anywhere inside my inventory list. Strange. Oh, I didn't pick them up. Okay, there we go. Now we've picked them up. I thought that my auto loot was on, but since there, there's there's an enemy around, that's why it didn't auto loot. Uh, those little piles on the ground that you're seeing in between the grass, those little white things, those are piles of uh, salt. You can loot those if you want to, and you can use the salt to season your food later on once you get skilled at cooking. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. Uh oh. What kind of gas is that? The nickel... Oh, it's it's stun gas. Nickel dew sticks to the air and arrests the transient molecules of migrant matter. Okay. I definitely highly recommend that you inspect things in this game, by the way. I feel like you're missing out on a lot of the immersion and a lot of the joy of the game if you aren't, like, soaking in the lore of the universe. Uh, I feel like that's actually one of the big things this game has going for it. There's some boar skin gloves right there, but don't we have gauntlets? Oh, we don't. We don't have gauntlets. It must be the Child of the Hearth that starts with steel gauntlets. All right, well, I'll take the gloves, and then we will take those gloves and throw them on our hands. And now we've got... Five damage reduction. Didn't I have a hat? Did they break my hat? Are my numbers adding up right now? So three, one, one, one. I feel like we should have six damage reduction, but it says we have five AV. I'm missing something right now. Something's not right. You spot an asphalt weep? You note the location of the weep in your journal. I actually have no idea what an asphalt weep means. There's an engraved sword right there, though, so we gotta take that. Kill that guy off real quick. I mean, I know what it means. There's like an asphalt geyser coming up out of the ground right now, and now I'm covered in asphalt because I'm blinking black. But anyways, I don't know what that's used for, actually. It must have a use inside the context of the universe because they specifically added it to my journal and pointed it out. And so it must be worth something. That's a feathered woven tunic. What that means is if you wear it, you get a bonus to reputation with birds and bird-like humanoids. That guy has a gas mask on. He just dropped it on the ground. Oh, he threw a grenade at me? Oh, you little turd. He threw a gas grenade at me. You got to pay attention in this game, man. Sometimes the AI will be wily. If they have like a throwing item, they will definitely use that throwing item on you or at least try to sucks because I would have rather looted it and got it for myself. Is the gas cleared? Looks like the gas cleared. And there's our final stairway down. Ooh, treasure chest. Sweet. Just got an iron dagger. Okay. Well, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. This is Caves of Cud. I will probably be streaming it at some point this week. I've been looking forward to it. Uh, don't let the graphics of this game put you off of it. This game is much more in-depth than 90% of the RPGs you're going to find anywhere else. And it provides that depth by giving up a little bit of fidelity on the graphical end of the game. But trust me, if you want to play a game that is deep and has loads of things to learn and loads of things to touch on and loads of things to fiddle with, Caves of Cud will give you an absurd amount of hours. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.